Hey, GED students, I had a student, Mary, email me that she was struggling with some of the practice from the Intro to Algebra page on the crash course. She was looking at this uh, practice where the experience level practice where we were doing one steps with fractions, one step solving one step equations with fractions, and she found some pretty challenging examples. So let's go ahead and look at some of the examples from that worksheet and see if we can make them make sense. As I always say, whenever I bust out a fraction in math class, the first step is not to panic. Don't panic, you guys. Here we go. All right, so a couple things you need to remember in order to do the problems we're going to be doing today. The first thing is inverses. We can't do algebra without understanding a little bit about inverses. So just a quick reminder, I need you to remember that the opposite or inverse of addition, of course, is subtraction. And the opposite of or inverse of multiplication is division. So we need to understand inverses in order to solve equations. Now there's something else you need to understand about a fraction. And this might be the piece that you don't understand that makes fractions challenging. And that is one of the things you need to understand about a fraction is a fraction, one way to think about it is as, is as an act of division. So for example, if I see the fraction two thirds right here, uh, one way to think about this is two divided by three. So when you look at something like this, two thirds of X, uh, you can see those two things are shoved together. They're multiplying. Uh, so two thirds is multiplying by X. Yes, that's one way to think of it. But another way to think of it is is that I'm multiplying by two, but I'm actually dividing by the number on the bottom. So it's two X's divided by three, two thirds X. That's another way to think of that. Okay, let's take those two pieces of information and go try some of the tricky examples from that worksheet. So first one I just wanted to look at was number one. Let's start nice and simple. Let's look at what happens when we're adding and subtracting. So you guys, be armed here with your TI-30XS calculator. You get one when you're doing your GED whenever you're solving equations like this. So if you don't know how to handle the fraction, which I'm going to do it by hand, but I'm also going to do it in my calculator. If you don't know how to do it, handle the fraction, you can also do it in your calculator. Okay, so here we go. Uh, directions here, if they were here, would say solve. So remember when I'm trying to solve, I'm trying to get the letter by itself. So here I see P is not alone on his side of the equation. Uh, there is a five and one half over there and we can see that um, five and one half and P are terms. They are things adding and subtracting. So I'm going to move this five and one half over by doing the opposite. I'm going to subtract him away. Now I didn't choose subtraction because of this plus. I actually chose subtraction because the five and a half is a positive number. So I know if I subtract five and a half from five and a half, I'll have zero. I'll have nothing left over there. So let's see what happens. Five and a half minus five and a half. That's opposites. They cancel and I'm left with plus P or positive P, just P. And then six minus five and a half. Guys, I know you guys struggle with fractions, but I really feel like we should be able to do this one in our heads. If I have six things, six things, and I take away five and a half, well, we'll take away one, two, three, four, five and a half of them. And what's left here? just one half. So P is equal to one half. Now you might be mad at me, Kate, I don't know how to do that. What was that weird picture about? You can also do this in your calculator. You can type this into your calculator, six minus five and a half. So to input six minus five and one half into my calculator, the first thing I do is make sure I'm in the right mode. I want to be in math print mode for fractions. So go ahead and hit the mode button and then we're going to arrow down to the word math print. Now mine's already highlighted in black, but if yours wasn't, it would be important to do this. So highlight over the word math print, press enter to select, and then you can just press clear and that'll get you out of the screen. And now you'll be able to more easily type fractions. So let's do it. Six minus. Now I want to put in a mixed number. That's right there in green towards the top left of the buttons here. It looks like U and over D. So if I want anything in green, I have to hit the green key first, that second button. And then I can hit that N over D button right underneath. And you see, it'll give me the space to type in a mixed number. And I can type the five in there for the whole number. And then arrow over the top of my fraction to type right and arrow down to type two. And now I have six minus five and a half. I'm arrowing out so you can see that, but six minus five and a half, and I just press enter, and you can see my calculator returns that that's one half. All right, uh, so you can do it by hand or you can do it in your calculator, wonderful. So that was number one. Now let's take a look 
at example number two. Once again, you can see I have a situation where the letter is not alone on its side of the equation. There's a number hanging out. My goal when I'm solving is to isolate the variable, get it alone so I can find out what it's equal to. So I want to get rid of this negative one and a half. And like I said, we always, in algebra, we move things from one side of an equal sign to another by doing the opposite. So instead of subtracting one and a half, I'm going to add one and a half. Now I can do whatever I want as long as I do it to both sides of the equation. On this side, subtracting one and a half and adding one and a half are opposites. They cancel. M's alone just like I wanted. And on this side, there's the work to do. Now this is a trickier problem. It's not just six take away five and a half. We've got um, one's an improper fraction, one's a mixed number, one's a negative, one's a positive. You know, we have fourths and we have halves. There's a lot going on here. So feel free to type this one into your calculator if you don't know how to do it by hand. So to input negative five fourths plus one and a half into my TI-30 excess model, multi view, I would first hit the negative key. Make sure you don't use the minus key. The negative key is down at the bottom by the enter button. And then I need a fraction, so I'm going to go n over d. I'll put 5 on the top, and I'm just going to right arrow to get to the bottom of my fraction, press 4. Now, super duper important that you don't just keep typing down here. A lot of students keep typing. See how funny it looks with everything on the bottom of my fraction? That is not what I want. So don't keep typing. After you get negative 5 fourths, make sure you press right arrow to get out of the fraction. Then you can type plus. And I want a mixed number again, so I hit the second button, and that n over d will then give me that mixed number u n over d, and I can type 1 and 1, and I'm using my arrow key to navigate around my fraction, and enter tells me that negative 5 fourths plus 1 and 1 half is 1 fourth. You don't have to know too much about fractions to be able to do the algebra that shows up on the GED. Okay, so first two answers done. Let's take a look at some scarier looking examples. Now, remember that when uh, we have a number that's adding or subtracting with the variable, we move it through addition or subtraction because addition and subtraction are opposites. Uh, but when we're multiplying and dividing, now we have to think about things a different way. So take a look at number three, this equation here. This says negative three-fourths times b equals two. So guys, if I wanted to get rid of negative 3 fourths here, which is what I want to do so b can be alone, I could do the opposite of timesing. That's one way to handle this. The opposite of multiplication is division. You could literally, and you would want your GED calculator to do this, divide the 3 fourths away on both sides. And that'll totally work. It'll work and you'd have to type in your calculator 2 divided by 3 fourths. You'd get the answer. Uh, there's nothing wrong with that way. But mathematicians have a slick way that they do this based on that other fact I told you about the fact that when you have a fraction uh, multiplying, it's really a number multiplying and a number dividing. A really quick way to deal with the opposites is just to flip the fraction on its head. We call that the reciprocal. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to do a little nifty trick where I take the entire left-hand side of the uh, equation and I am going to multiply it by the reciprocal of this fraction, the flip. Instead of multiplying by negative three-fourths, I'm going to multiply by negative four-thirds. Now you might say, why are you going to do that? Well, multiplying by 4 and dividing by 4 cancel. Multiplying by 3 and dividing by 3 cancel. And a negative times a negative cancels. And so everything there is going to cancel, so B is going to be alone just like I wanted. Now, remember though, you can't just make changes on an equation because you feel like it. You can do whatever you want, literally, as long as you do it to both sides. So I'm going to multiply the right-hand side by that very same number, negative 4 thirds. Wonderful. Let's see what happens. Again, we saw all the canceling on our left-hand side. Everything over there canceled except B, so B is alone. And now, you can multiply this in your in your calculator if you want to. It's super easy, but it's actually also easy to do by hand because we do multiply straight across when we multiply fractions. So 2 times 4 is 8, 1 times 3 is 3, and of course if you just are multiplying with one negative, your answer is still negative, and I get b is equal to negative 8 thirds. Not half as bad as it first appeared. Of course it's also really simple to just input that fraction into your TI excess. So in order to do that, I would type 2 and then it doesn't really matter if you use the times button or the parentheses. I'll use the parentheses since that's the way it looks on my paper. So times uh, negative, and I want to type in a fraction to do 4 
arrow over so I can get the three on the bottom and again I'll arrow out of the fraction before closing my parentheses and you can see that indeed that is negative eight-thirds. Okay so let's look at the next one. You might say well will the next one work the same way? Uh, it will if you take away this two and one-tenths nonsense. I don't like this mixed number here. In fact even though your third grade teacher was super into mixed numbers, you know, when you have a whole number and a fraction, uh, mathematicians almost never use them because they're a pain in the butt to multiply and divide with. Um, we want to be able to flip these fractions up and down on their head. We can't do that with a mixed number. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to first convert it into an improper fraction. So to convert a mixed number into an improper fraction, uh, you multiply the whole number times the denominator, right? We take the two whole things, divide them into 10 pieces each. That'll give us 20 pieces. Add in the piece we already had. We have 21 pieces now of size 10. We have 21 tenths. So 21 tenths is equal to 1 6. And now that I have it written there as an improper rather than a mixed number, I can use that lovely trick where I just take the entire left hand side and multiply by the reciprocal, the flip of the fraction. Of course I can do whatever I want as long as I do it to both sides. Whoa, my brain and my hand didn't participate. I did a common student error. I need to multiply by the exact same thing on both sides. So if I multiplied by 10 21st on that side, I'll multiply by 10 21st on the other side as well. Okie dokie. And now multiplying and dividing by 10 cancel, dividing and multiplying by 21 cancel. Ends alone just like I wanted. And on this side, let's see, I like to multiply fractions by hand. Again, you can do it in your calculator if you want to, but uh, it's easy enough to cross reduce and then multiply straight across by hand and I do get 5 out of 63. So a lot easier than it looks, um, especially when you're multiplying and dividing with fractions. They, they're actually really easy to multiply and divide with. It's just addition and subtraction that can be challenging with fractions. So I want to show you two cool things in the calculator actually here. So totally I could just do that math that we were talking about, the 1 6 times 10 over 21, so that's easy. N over D, I arrow around and put in 1 6 Make sure I arrow out of that, and then I can times it by whether you use parentheses or a time sign, it doesn't really matter. And I'll use the N over D button again so that I can type in 10 21st. Arrow out of my fraction before closing the parentheses. And of course, that is 5 60 thirds, just like we said. But I just want to show you how good math always works. So let me do something a little funky here. Uh, let's imagine you had this on the screen. You had that original equation, 2 and 1 tenths n is equal to 1 6. Well, you know, what if you don't know anything about mixed numbers? You don't know anything about conversions. You're really, really stuck. You're really, really mad at me. Kate, I freaking hate fractions. Well, let's think about this. What are the 2 tenths in the n doing right now? Well, they're shoved together, so they must be multiplying. So I could just remove that 2 and 1 tenths by dividing. I could divide both sides of my equation by 2 and 1 tenths. You say, can I do that? Yeah, you sure can. Multiplying by 2 and 1 tenths and dividing by 2 and 1 tenths are opposites. That's going to cancel. And then there's the work to do in my calculator. 1 sixth divided by 2 and 1 tenths. Your TI can handle that, even though it freaks you out. Take a look. One sixth, make sure you arrow out of the fraction, and then I want to divide it by, I'm going to use a divide button, and then I need a mixed number to do two and one tenths, you n over d, so I press second and then n over d to get you n over d, and I type two and one tenth. And even if the only darn thing that you could remember was the opposite of multiply is divide and you remembered nothing else about fractions, look at that, same answer. 563. All right, so let's clear this out. And I picked the two grossest problems I could find on the page just to make sure that I wasn't going to intimidate you. Let's look at number 13. All right, so same situation here. We see V is not alone. V is currently being multiplied by 11 eighths. So if I want V to be alone, the quick, fast way to get rid of a fraction multiplier is to multiply by the reciprocal. Again, not the only way but certainly a very effective way. So I'm going to multiply by the reciprocal or flip of 11 eighths, that's 8 elevenths. Again, I can do whatever I want as long as I do it to both sides.
Now that being said, on this side we see the 8 and the 8 cancel, the 11 and the 11 cancel, and I do have my V alone just like I wanted. But on that side, remember, if you're going to do this by hand, we do not multiply and divide uh, with mixed numbers, not because it's not possible, just because it's actually a pain. It would take more steps and more work. So the easier thing to do is to convert this into a mixed number here. So we'll do that. I'll take my one whole thing, divide it into 64 pieces. So 1 times 64 is 64. Then I'll add in the 13 pieces I already had to see a total of 77 pieces of size 64th or 77 64ths. And that is multiplying with 8 elevenths. Now, again, you can do this work in your calculator. You don't have to do all these steps by hand, but this one is actually easier for me to do by hand because I see that I can cross reduce. 11 and 77 are both divisible by 11. 11 divided by 11 is, is 1 and 77 divided by 11 is 7. And 8 and 64 are both divisible by 8. 8 divided by 8 is 1. 64 divided by 8 is 8. And then it's so easy to multiply straight across. 1 times 7 is 7. 1 times 8 is 8. V is equal to 7. Seven eighths. But again, from the very start, you could have plugged this thing into your calculator, 8 elevenths uh, times 1 and 13 64ths. It would have given you the exact same answer, 7 eighths, okay? If I were going to put this one into the calculator, I would have done it right from the beginning, right? When it was 8 elevenths, 8 and over D11, arrow out of my fraction, and times use the second button to get that UN over D key like we've been doing and type in 1 and 13 60 fourths. Although it's easier for me when I'm doing it by hand to do it with a pure fraction, your calculator doesn't care if you use a pure fraction or a mixed number and you can see boom seven eighths. Okay last one. Just looked so gross. I wanted to make sure you didn't freak out and looked a little different, but I still want you to see, yeah, this K is on the top, but see how the 9 is on the top of a fraction and the 65 is on the bottom? So we can get rid of it that same way. We can put a 65 on the top and a 9 on the bottom. We'll see that lovely cancellation principle. And again, I can do whatever I want as long as I do it to both sides. And let's take a look. 65 cancels with 65, 9 on the bottom cancels with 9 on the top, and there is my K isolated like I wanted. And then this one is so disgusting. I, I wasn't even going to try to do it by hand, guys. I'm going to type it straight into my calculator. So here I go. This is the kind of problem to make you grateful for your calculator, huh? Let's go ahead and type it in. So I want a mixed number there, 1 in 316, 845ths. So I'm going to use the second button. And then that N over D key will give me U N over D. And I'll type the 1 arrow over to the numerator of my fraction and type 316. Arrow down to the bottom, the denominator, type 845. Make sure you arrow out of that fraction before you multiply. And I'll just use the time sign. It doesn't really matter. By the fraction, 65 over 9. And look at that extreme makeover, 129 over 13. And a lot of you guys might be saying, Kate, I don't like this number 129 over 13. Uh, it's an improper fraction. My third grade teacher taught me I could never use improper fractions. Yeah, sorry, your third grade teacher didn't understand high school math. Improper fractions are totally legit and acceptable. They could come up on the GD, so this could be the answer. But you could also convert it to a mixed number, and that would be a fine answer as well. They're totally both acceptable, and you can even do it in your calculator. So to convert this sucker into a mixed number using your calculator, just leave that guy in the screen there. Don't clear it or anything. And I want the convert button. So you're going to see it right here, uh, top middle of your screen. It says N over D, that's a regular fraction. And then these arrows here mean convert to U N over D, convert to a mixed number. So it's in green, so I mean needed the, to hit the green button. So I'll hit second, and then that... Um, times 10 to the end key that's right below the conversion and you see it says I'm going to take this fraction and I'm going to convert, convert it from a proper fraction to a mixed number. That button will take you both directions and I press enter and I do get 9 and 12 thirteenths. And both of these answers are totally right and totally legitimate and neither one is any better than the other. All right, if you have any questions about this or any other GED math topic, be sure to drop it in the comments and I'll do my best to answer it. So, you know, if you do not practice this, you are not going to remember it for test day. So make sure you check out the practice that I have dropped in the comments down there and make sure you are prepared for test day.